Simple Car Guy here and today we are checking out the Snursway Smart Level 2 EV charging station. There are three things I am really impressed by with this product, but are there any negatives? Let's see what comes in the box, get this installed, set up, connected to the app and find out. First I was impressed with how well it was packaged and the quality of the parts used here. In the box we get the cable holder, some screws as well as a little security screwdriver for mounting the device, a quick start guide, an installation template, an RFID card, a nicely laid out manual with specifications and instructions on how to install the charger and finally the charging station itself. We get 26 feet of cable which is really good to see as you will be able to reach the charging port on your car no matter where you park. The charging plug feels nice in the hand and does not have any sharp edges or anything of that nature. The NEMA 1450 plug is molded around the cable and feels well made as well. While the input cable is 8 gauge, the charging cable is 10 gauge but that should be plenty for 32 amps. As far as the unit itself, it's very orange but I think that's what makes it so cool. Of course you can get other colors if you like to match your style but I really do like this orange. Going around the unit we have a physical power button on the side, a wall bracket that's secured in place with a security screw as well as what looks like a communication port at the bottom. I can also say that it won't look out of place in a very nice upscale garage. This charging station could be used as is, but it's definitely designed to be mounted on the wall. Luckily they include a simple template, so installing this couldn't be easier. It took me less than 10 minutes. You want to install it close to the NEMA 1450 receptacle, but other than that it's just drilling a few holes, pushing in the anchors and screwing in the bracket. Then the unit can be hung in place and you're basically done. You can install the security screw on the bottom if you install this outside or in a common area so that it cannot be easily removed. The reason it can't be installed in common areas and in apartment buildings is because it's actually UL listed. I am very impressed that it actually is UL listed and compliant with the UL 2594 standards. That means it meets or exceeds strict safety regulations. Anyway, now we just have to plug it in. I also wanted to quickly touch base on how to add the Nursway charging station to the app. The process is super simple. Download and install the app, allow it to use Bluetooth on your phone and within seconds it automatically discovers the device. Then just provide your Wi-Fi password and in a few seconds it's basically added to the app and you're done. Once you plug this charging station into NEMA 1450 plug, you're basically presented with this screen and it's pretty quick to turn on. Uh, obviously, you're not going to be turning it on or off very often, if at all, but if that's a thing for you, then yes, it turns on pretty quick. We are presented with this awesome screen, so that looks really nice. It is not a touch screen, so you cannot modify anything from here. You do have uh, the power button on the right side and the bottom over there, but that's basically it. We also have this RFID feature here, which is an amazing feature and one of my favorites on this device. Why? Well, because you can use one of these cards or you can even just configure your phone to where it only allows charging when this is presented or if your phone is allowing it to charge. Why is that important? Well, if you park in a common area, so parking garage or if you park, let's say, uh, next to your townhouse and your neighbor can park right next door, uh, you wouldn't want somebody else to come in and charge their car for free, right? Uh, well, unless they're your friends or something like that, but you would want to protect your charging station. So this will basically allow you to lock the system out and not allow anyone to charge that's not authorized. As you saw, setting up the app was super simple and that's because they're using this Smart Life app. So I think it's common for a lot of products, at least as far as I understand. But yeah, you add your device and then you can go in here and then you have the status, you have your, so you can see you can charge for free, but you can change these settings so you can just swipe to start charging. Obviously nothing's plugged into the device right now, so it's not going to start anything, but we will test that in just a minute. I'm going to plug it into my BMW i3. We also have the charging mode uh, selection, so we can go from real-time charging to fixed time charges, so we can... Uh, specify the time and date where we want to charge or the time of the day where you want to charge. You can also look at the load so you can limit the load 
in your house. So if you want to limit it to six amps, you can do that. And then the charging limit for this device is 32 amps. They also have the 48 amp version. So you can get that one as well. And one of the coolest ones for me is the records. So you can go in here and see how much power has been charged, how much you've used. And then of course you can look through that as a schedule once you've used it a few times and it'll give you all the information, how, how much your car's using for, let's say that month, that week, whatever it may be. Now we can also go to this edit button right here. And what we can find in here is some device information, uh, not, that, not that interesting, but we can also go to tap to run automation and we can add actually smart scenes so you can automate certain things with this device. You can have it turned off or turn on whatever time you want it to be and different things like that. You can even add a shortcut to your home screen by just clicking this button. It gives you the instructions on how to do so. And of course, if you go to the settings, there are a few settings we can configure in here as well. We can set the alarm for the charging current so we can set the charging current to whatever we want. Obviously it should be a 32 if that's the max that this device supports, but we can limit it to let's say 20 amps if your circuit doesn't support more than that. We also have alarm systems. So this is pretty cool. This is a lot of the safety stuff. We can go in here and we have the overcurrent alarm. So we can set, you know, once it's at 35 amps, we want, you know, to know that this might be an issue. We have uh, another overcurrent alarm. So we can set multiple ones over voltage alarms. We have our, um, uh, contactors fold ground folds or whatever you want so all this stuff can be easily configured and you get a notification for when there is an issue even for uh, leakage fault so if you have faulty electrical wiring this will catch it for you very very useful and of course uh, we can see the total amount of power used uh, by this device which is zero at the moment but I'm gonna go ahead and plug the car in and we'll see how long it takes to charge my BMW i3 from basically empty. So as you can see, when I plug the car in, nothing really happens. Why? Well, because it's telling us that we have to swipe the card or download the app to start using. So I'm going to use my RFID card, scan it. And there you go, and we are now charging. Once we plug it in and enable the device, we can see that the voltage is 240 or 238 volts. This is the total kilowatt hours that we have put into the car. Obviously it's been less than a minute. And this is the amperage at which it's gonna be charging at. So it jumps straight to almost 30 amps right away. That's pretty good for this car. The max on this car is 32, and that's why I have this 32 amp version and not the 48 amp version you know now it wouldn't be very useful for me but of course that is very useful if your car can take that much current so like all of the newer evs basically will charge at 48 amps uh, no problem but yeah do verify that information so here on the phone we have basically the same information so we have uh, the voltage we have the current we have the power going in so seven kilowatts it translates it for you so 30 amps at 240 volts is basically seven kilowatts. But yeah, real time charging and we can stop charging from here as well if we want. So I'm gonna hit turn the power off. Boom, and we are turned off. You heard the relay click and we're no longer charging. So you can control it from within your app. So I just unplugged the car and plugged it back in. Now let's turn it on with the app. So I'm just gonna swipe it here. And there it is, and now we're back to charging. And as you can see, the amperage is going up, so we're going back to the normal charging speed, and the car's gonna start charging. So what does seven kilowatts do for us? Well, basically it's 5 p.m. at the moment, and we're gonna be done charging at nine. So in four hours, we're gonna go from, let's see, from 18% to 100%. And do remember that from 20% to 80%, that's where your really fast, good charging happens. Then after it really, really slows down. So I'll try to catch around 80 to see how long it takes to go from 20 to 80, probably gonna be only about an hour and a half to two hours. And then the other 20% is where it slows down and charges the rest of the vehicle. It has been about two hours since we plugged the car in. We are still charging at 15 amps. So that means the car is basically finishing up the charge. Uh, that's kind of how the charging curve on the BMW i3 works. Once it's at the higher level of charge, it slows down 
uh, how much amperage it can put into the battery. But we can also see that we have put 14.2 kilowatt hours into the battery. So it's been almost two hours and our charge is now at 85%. So we've basically gone through the entire fast charging phase of this vehicle's charging curve. And the last 15% is gonna take two hours. But you can see how fast you can charge the majority of the battery. So if your car has a much bigger battery, let's say 70 kilowatts, you can charge those 50 kilowatts, so from 20% or from 10% to 80 or 90%, depending on the car, that's gonna go really, really fast. And you can charge that very quickly uh, using this charger. Of course, we're charging at seven kilowatts per hour, so you can do the math very easily. At least on this vehicle, that's what it's charging at. It can go up to 7.7 .7 kilowatts if your car can accept that. Overall, I have been quite impressed with this unit, but are there any negatives? The only negative I can think of is that it must be configured through the phone and there are no physical buttons on this unit other than the power button on the side here. So if you set it up to work on RFID cards only or the app and don't have either of those with you, you won't be able to start charging. Luckily, you would still be able to plug in your charger into the car and then once you get in the house, you can enable it through the phone remotely. You can also just use your RFID card just like that. And now we are charging. This remote feature is my absolute favorite feature on this unit as you can remotely be in charge of who and when charges their car. And of course, you can also remotely set schedules for when it should start charging if you have cheaper rates at night or have off-peak hours. What's also nice is that this unit is IP65 rated, which means it is water resistant. It makes it perfect for shared spaces or even outdoor installations as you won't have to worry about it getting wet or that someone else will use it without your authorization. This unit should be able to charge your car at speeds up to 7.7 .7 kilowatts and be compatible with any J1772 EV plug that is basically used by most modern EVs. Of course, if you have a Tesla, you will need an adapter, but I think that's pretty much a standard for most Tesla drivers. For me though, I like the modern design with the easy to read display, level two charging, 26 feet of cable, built-in safety features such as the overcurrent and the over uh, voltage protection, and of course there's smart features where I can review charging history right on my phone. I would also really like for you to check out this video where I tell you about 10 things you didn't know about this BMW i3. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.